Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me, Alicia. If this is your first time here, and if not, welcome back. We are back with a video. It's a very random video, you guys. If you follow me on Instagram, and then if you're following my mini vlogs, you know that the video that was supposed to go up today is sitting, well, first of all, we're in Aruba. I probably should say this. We're in Aruba, um, and the video that was supposed to go up today is on a hard drive back in Birmingham, Alabama. So. Mm. I figured, don't start it now. Wait till, we start, me to start. wait till we start the question. So I figured that it would be a good time to do a QA and a because for some reason when he's in my vlog, you guys have a ton of questions. I don't know what it is about this little face. So I said, hey, let me just put a Q&A out there to my YouTube audience. I also polled my Instagram audience and we're gonna do a Q&A. We're gonna do a quick round robin with what we both have on and then we're gonna get into the video. Hey guys, my outfit is pretty simple. I just got it from Zara today. I had nothing for this video. Everything that I had was like sleeveless. And if I decide to go like this, my arms aren't shaving. So this entire outfit is from Zara. I will link the links below. My glasses um, are from Amazon. I would and wouldn't recommend them. Anyway, and then of course I've got a wash and go. I'm also all natural. I haven't put on makeup since we've been on this trip. You go. Me either. Uh, I have nothing on. This is a spandex cotton tee from H&M. And is in my uh, Brown and Forever 21 factory sweatpants I've had forever. They're okay. black. We got a fancy watch. Oh, CBRP3. Shout out uh, to Jay Cray. Black owned, fireman owned uh, watch company out of Birmingham. McCalla, I think. Uh, he gifted me this. So I just, you know, when I'm out, Tell people where I get it from. Hopefully, it helps them out. And glasses are from Warby Parker. I would recommend those. I would recommend the Warby Parker only because like mine are supposed to have blue light, but after talking with the optometrist, apparently all blue lights aren't the same. And the company that I am wearing um, doesn't even come close to the blue light percentage. So I will be having on a pair of Warby Parkers very soon. Um, also, in true William fashion, he made us some drinks. Mm. So we have a mojito. A mojito with the rum. Mojito. Local uh, rum I found at the grocery store when we got here. Uh, two ounces. I go heavier when we're at home because you should get more when you're at home. So maybe three ounces. Uh, put some mint in there. Put some simple syrup in there. Put some limes in there. Squeeze the lime juice in there. Muddle it up. Stir it up. Top it off with a little, little club soda. If it's not sweet enough for you, add a little more simple syrup, add your ice, bam, what we doing? Bam. So I'm going to give you guys a second to make that drink, and then we're going to get into the questions. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so we're going to dive right into it. I did tell William to go ahead and set the timer for 35 minutes because, y'all, I'm exhausted. It's 1021. I kind of want to do the night, even though it kind of doesn't look like night with all the light. Um, but I said set the timer for 35 minutes, so we are definitely going to run through all of the YouTube questions because I am posting it here on YouTube. Um, and then I'll get into as many Instagram questions as I possibly can. For those that might be asking, the travel vlog for Aruba is not going to come out this Thursday. You will get a sneak peek this Thursday, but the actual travel vlog will come out next Thursday. So I think we'll start off with like the basics and this will kind of cover some Instagram and a lot of YouTube questions about your age, where you're from, why you went to Alabama, and then how we met. I feel like that was like a, re a lot of repeat. So, y'all know me. Uh, just turned their. I know it's bright. It's very bright. I kind of wanted to set the mood. Maybe I can change it when I'm editing. But I wanted a moody video. It's not. I apologize. I'll try to call it right. Anyway, so Team Sag. Um, I was born in Houston, raised in county outside of Alabama. I'm not going to name it. For those that know, you know. For those that don't, know. Uh, I went to Alabama because my mother made me go. I got accepted into NYU and I was dead set on going to NYU. It probably could have something to do with my boyfriend at the time was from New York, so I was just, I'm like, I'm going to New York. My mom was like, under no circumstances. So I applied to, to Alabama relatively later, got in, and that's how I ended up being at Alabama. Uh, I am 36, going on 37 in February. I'm born and raised in Mississippi, small town in Mississippi. If I told you, you won't know it anywhere. Um, my dad was born and raised in that exact same town. He left and came back. 
Um, I ended up at the University of Alabama because I always liked, loved the University of Alabama. Reason being, my mother was, remember, Alabama, behind the times back then, it was the South, uh, didn't start allowing black students until the late 60s, mid to late 60s. Um, and my mother was one of the first 100 African Americans allowed and accepted into the University of Alabama. Her mother, my grandmother, Momo, rest in peace, actually um, made her go to the University of Alabama. My grandmother went to Alabama State. My mother wanted to go to Alabama State. She wanted to be around her people. And my grandmother basically told her, no, you got in, you got to set and pave the way for others to come behind you. And if my mother could make it back then in the late 60s and 70s, and trust me, I've heard some stories. Mm -hmm. she's, she's got some stories of what she had to go through yeah. and every single day and going to class and being escorted to class and, and whatnot. Uh, then I knew I could make it and wanted to make it uh, in 2005. So, ended up in Alabama and met her. And that, that's another thing that, now that you said that out loud, I've heard a lot of stories. I probably haven't heard nearly as many as him, but it's always been on my back burner to-do list to kind of sit her down with a camera. Not anything for you guys, but just to have her talk about some of the stories just for her, just for something for Alexander to, you know, watch later or if we have another kid later. I just want that to be memorialized. I don't want that to die with her. And I feel like for him to be a part of something where his mother was one of 100. I mean, now we look at Alabama and there's like, even though there's, it's still predominantly a PWI, it's still, we're still a minority, but to be one of only 100, and I think at the time she was like one of 75, like I yeah. think they started adding them later. And so I want to be able to moralize those stories. So I'm glad we're doing this because now I have the memory to put it back on my to-do list. So that is where we both met. Technically we met on Facebook. This was back when Facebook was college only, so you had to have an EDU address. And I'll tell you how we met. It was it's funny. So my when I was going to college, my mom always told me, don't put no picture of you on the internet because people are crazy on the internet. And so there was this thing going around where people were like, in three words, describe me from my profile picture. So I put it up, and your friend was like, at the time, I had a very... Um, grainy picture of Gabrielle Union because that was the person I was told I looked like all throughout high school like oh my god you look like everybody else I was like all right I'm gonna put a very grainy picture of her up and so I put that that was my profile picture for months and so when I posted that as my status your friend over here messaged me he was like well if you put an actual picture of you up I might be able to say something. I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, I know that's not you. He's like, I know that's Gabrielle Union. And I was like, no one's ever been able to, like, no one can tell that was Gabrielle Union. How can you tell? And then we started talking from there. Not like, like, talking as in like dating, but just like chit-chatting, realizing that we both went to UA. We both not really like walked in the same circles, but we walked in friends who walked in the same circles. Um, <clears throat> And then met up randomly and then met up again randomly and just started talking and I don't I think we were friends from like February until June mm -hmm. and then got together in June of 2006 and here we are so that gets into another question that people ask how long we've been together so like I said we got together freshman summer go so going into sophomore year summer 2006. Uh, summer 2006 it was a lot for me because that was also the summer that I lost my granddad and for those that don't know I don't talk about my father a lot here um so my grandfather was the closest thing to a father to me and I think what solidified it for me was that after he passed even though I was all the way in a country bumpkin town in Alabama he was all the way in a country bumpkin town in Mississippi so all we really had was phones it was the first time where I was where it felt like he cared the fact that he didn't know this man whatsoever but he would call or he would text and ask how I was doing and so we officially got together that summer we didn't get engaged until 2012 mm -hmm. so it was six years but four of those were college because I it took me five years to graduate he actually came out in four or five mm -hmm. five to ten so it took you five so it took yeah. me a little it took me a little over it's five years because I switched my major and then I had to double major um, so we got engaged in 2012 and then got married in 2013 so that's a, that's the spiel so I've been with when I say ball and chain 
ball and chain. I have a one year old, but you seem to have a lot more freedom to travel, do date nights and other hobbies. How do you make that happen? We have a village. We have a village that doesn't do, I would say don't do a lot, but they actually do. But we have a village. I'm lucky that I have both of my sisters and my mother within 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. That's a blessing and a curse. Um, he has his mother, even though his mom is still in Mississippi, she is retired, and so she's not really doing much. So if we need her up here for long periods of time, like if William's going to be out of town for a week, or if I'm going out of town on a solo or a girl trip for a week, it's easy for her to come up for a week or a week and a half or two weeks, not only to see her grandson, but to also help William out because he actually, you know, works and has to travel and stuff for work. So we definitely have a village. Also, I think this year, or maybe this year with Alexander, we've I feel like we've kind of redefined what it what it means in terms of a date night. For me, date night would all was always where are we going, let's go out, let's go out. He's been really good about making a nice meal, um, having a nice you know setup downstairs in the man cave, and so. For us, it's not necessarily date nights going out, but just like focusing on each other for a certain period of time. Yeah, uh, I will also say in addition to that, uh, our jobs, <clears throat> even though both can, well, multiple jobs, uh, job, my job can be very demanding and uh, time consuming both sides of it uh the setup of our jobs also allows for us to be able to kind of move things around uh, i make quote make my own schedule so i go see my folks do my trainings presentations kind of when i choose to or you know more so when it works for the customer and whatnot uh, but they're both work from home type of job so all right while we were on the subject of your job, so the next question that I have <coughs> is, does William work a nine to five? What line of work is he in? Similar field as yours. And I did ask him if he would be okay answering that question, because he doesn't really talk about it. I, I get a lot of questions once I'm showing a little bit of what I do throughout the day uh, here and there. Uh, at the, end, at the, end, of the end of the day, it's, uh, it's sales. This sales at the end of the day. It is just a more technical, uh, senior technical type of role uh, uh, in sales. So I'm in the chemical industry. Chemical is a broad term, but uh, specifically I'm in the agricultural uh, industry. I won't get into products and stuff. You just have to be in it, but that is basically what I do in a nutshell. And he has moments when he travels a lot, and it's when those moments where he's like back to back to back to back to back, especially when Alexander wasn't in daycare yet, that I was like, wow. And so that's when like his mother, uh, my mother-in-law really came in, to, like, came in to help us because it was, so he has pockets where he's like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And then he has some pockets where he's like, all right, I'm gonna be out this, out this day, this day. And most of the time, he, what we've been doing really good that's helped us post Alexander is doing calendar invites. So we'll go to our calendar on our iPhone, we'll do an invite, so he'll say, Mississippi, you know, work in Mississippi, he'll do the number of days, and that way I'll know that I need to plan my day around the 8.30 to 4.30 that Alexander is in daycare. And if it goes outside of that, I need to have someone else come and help me. So that's one thing that's really helped us do life as parents is to do the calendar alert. So that's what he does. He travels. All right, next question. How do you deal with disagreements respectfully? I did it. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm a fire. So here's, I've gotten a lot better, correct? Before, when we were fresh in marriage, right? And I was having to learn to live with another person. When he did something to upset me or irritate me, I wouldn't tell him, I would just go quiet. And I'm type A and I'm a Sagittarius. So my quiet game is strong. So some days I would be able to go days without talking to him. And he'd be like, and it's not for his like I'm trying. He'd be like, are you okay? <clears throat> Fine. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Are you sure? Yes. Why are you asking? So I would do that for a while. He knows something's wrong. Eventually he'd be like, Alicia, I know something's wrong. Well, let's just talk about it. And he would 
sit down and we would talk about it. I've now gotten better and my days are like, give me a couple of hours. But I look back, looking back at it, it's been great because people tell him all the time he's Barack, which I mean, in the way he talks, yes. He ain't yelling, he ain't cursing, which for me he can get on my nerves. I'm just like, yell back. But he was like, I'm not going to yell at you. <laughs> I'm going to yell at you. And it's great. You need someone to have that balance for you. But he's always the first one to say something's wrong let's talk about it or even if he has something that he wants to get off his chest he'll wait until the right moment so he's been I, I, would, I, would, I feel like you're like the moderator or like the Mandela of, of the marriage I feel uh, I don't know about Mandela that's a that's a pretty high standard <laughs> uh, I would just say even more so it was more so about I'd rather know or get it out of the way. I don't like uh, tension in the air. I mean, we're obviously we're married. Uh, we share the same household. I don't want to be walking around in my household and it's just freezing cold in there. And I'm not talking about the AC. Uh, you know, you can just cut the tension with a butter knife. Um, and it, we're walking around not talking to each other, trying to avoid each other, trying not to piss the other one off anymore. And I don't, I don't, I'd rather be out the house than to be in the house uh, and, and that going on. So I'd rather just get it out the way or just know, hey, something wrong with you? Just tell me. Okay, cool. Then I'll leave you alone. Instead, I know something's wrong with you and you're acting like something's not wrong with you. Uh, or I know you're mad at me. Just say it. Let's get over it or get it off your chest and let's be done with it or get it out the way and we'll come back later at another hour, date, or whatever and talk about it. Um, next question. You guys are a beautiful, young, successful black couple. It appears you live in a very nice area. Do you get a lot of hate or the, the neighbors embrace you guys? Um, it's not new for us. I feel like everywhere we moved, we've always been the only black, if not only black, definitely the or youngest young, black. black couple in the neighborhood. Our yeah. first house, our second house, even the apartment we moved in before we moved to our second house to where we are now. We've always just been the oddball out um and i don't think anywhere we've moved we've been we haven't been embraced our the people the uh, house we lived in before he was really close because i told i don't think i told y'all before this one he never met a stranger okay never met a stranger we could be somewhere for an hour he's made a new friend they shared contact like to information talk to me i mean so I, cool. my gosh all the way in greece and now he's chitting chatting with somebody at the one so he's never met a stranger and you are from alabama got it i didn't know that so he's never met a stranger so it's very easy most of the time if they're if we're getting to know our neighbors he's getting to know the neighbors and they just like me because they talk to him because even though i'm very extroverted out here i'm very introverted at home okay i like to be by myself i say my four walls of my house so the the second house we stayed in they were really nice especially when we would go out of town we traveled a lot while we were in our second house and they made sure that our packages were actually under the house or there were some times when I messed around and left the garage up and they would text William hey it's a garage supposed to be up no can you go let it down they'll go let the garage down so they were actually one of our really nicest ones brought us treats and stuff for all the holidays the other house was rented for the most of the time up towards the very end of it it did get sold to a black couple that had a couple of daughters so we spoke to them um, and now that we are where we are now we're the only black not only are we only black people, we're the youngest, period. Black, white, whatever. Um, but it was really great. So when we first moved in the weekend, there was there's not a lot of people on that road, which is what so I we like. Don't really have a yeah, lot of neighbors. We don't. Uh, which I love this time around. There's yeah. no houses right up on us on each side. Uh, but you know, our road, there's other houses down the road. Yeah, there's like six houses down that road and either that weekend or the weekend after we moved in and we were just kind of in the garage sifting through boxes, a little bit of everybody dropped off from packages and that kind of stuff. Now, it, it took a second for them to realize, I think one or two of them ended up giving my mother-in-law the gift basket and she kindly told them, hey, this is their house. Um, and we've had some people ask what we do. I just strictly say finance. I don't even mention the term influencer because I don't want it to go over their head. So I say finance, he says sales, we kind of leave it at that. Um, but yeah, we just had somebody drop us off some cookies. Um, so we feel we, we're embraced. I also feel we're in a very democratic part of Birmingham, if you know what I mean. Next question. Um, yay, 
family make hey what's your most favorite thing about will as your husband and what's his most favorite thing about you as his wife and also what's your least favorite my most favorite is this he's very calm he's very even kilter and for me who sometimes my emotions can get up here um i like that he has a tendency he says to string in the balloon but i like that he has a tendency to kind of like meet me where i am i also love that he's very supportive um when we first got married influencing small business this was it, while it probably was out in the open it was never on my radar it was something that I kind of gradually got into and I like that with everything that I decided to add every new thing was like hey what do you think about this what do you think about this I love that he's supportive and kind of gives me advice and says okay well I think it should work like this or I think it should work like that um so I like that as far as like a least I feel like a least favorite. You go with your favorite, and I'll try to think of it. I don't know, a least favorite. Look, I ain't gonna be mad at you. I'm already, you already got me 10 years in marriage, so. You, you ain't going anywhere in the first place. That's my point, so. Sometimes he does tit for tat. I will say that. Like if I'll, I'll say, hey babe, like I just, we just did it. Like when we were getting up, I was like, hey babe, we didn't flush the toilet. He'll be like, oh, we didn't flush the toilet last night. What are you talking about last night? I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about right now, in this moment, you forgot to flush the toilet. So sometimes he does that. I don't like tit for tat. Like, <clears throat> so that would be my thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thing I love the most, that's, most is kind of tough, but uh, I will say her drive, your drive, uh, definitely helps push me in my drive. Um, I mean, she 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 does this, she does Instagram, she does her online business, Living Fearless, uh, does work for brands uh, on all platforms, and also you know pretty much the head of her family. She's there for that. Uh, she just doesn't stop. And, uh, you know, and we, I'll be honest, we probably wouldn't even be where we are in our our own family and marriage uh, if it wasn't for that drive. So that's what I definitely, definitely love about her. Uh, least favorite? How much time I got? Wait, not, not long, because I'm trying to get through a lot of okay. questions. Uh, hmm. You know what? I'll play off of what she just said, the tip for tat stuff. Uh, I am, this is me in general. I am not a fan. I hate hypocrisy. What I mean by that is, real simple, I don't like, I can't stand when somebody says or does something but gets on to you about doing it the exact same thing. Whether it's at a different time or not, gets on to you about this or fusses at you about this or brings this up, that person also does the same thing but doesn't know or realize they're doing it or when you try to bring it up to them and say, hey, why don't you work on that? And I, uh, that ain't what we're talking about. So I just don't like hypocrites. So at times, she can be a hypocrite. And that's what I can live with that. I can live with that. Um, Who's more relaxed approaches life with ease? This one. I think we just asked her. What's the one thing that you do well together outside of parenting? Traveling. <laughs> we travel well it's together. Very obvious. And we travel words. I, I don't know if you're looking for something deep, but we travel really well. It's one of those where we're now trying to get into the swing of traveling together with a child. And it's this trip is like, I thought we were ready when we went to Puerto Rico in April. We were not. Mm -mm. It's it's totally different traveling with a ch child that has tantrums and emotions and can somewhat talk. It's a lot. All right. Have y'all ever considered moving to a different city or a different state? Do y'all want more children? Yes, we considered moving to a different state. For most people that are around, Florida was always on our goal. It was actually something that if all things went according to plan, i.e. no COVID, we would have already been in Florida by now. Um, and Florida is still on our list. It was just, and he mentioned it, just, I don't know, we were just like randomly having a conversation or something. And we're already in an area right now where Alexander would be the minority. 
but there are some people that look like him for example in this daycare his teachers look like him the schools that he would go to there would be somebody that would look like him and William pointed it out that the area of Florida that we wanted to go to there's not a lot of people that look like us and I point blank period I want him to have black friends I would like for him to have a black friend. I would like for him to experience a black girlfriend. I would like for him to have a black teacher. And the area in Florida that we were thinking about moving to does not have that. So is Florida still in the plan for us? I would say yes. But we have gone from saying let's move to Florida to hey, let's try to find an investment property where we can vacation in Florida for a long period of time, but then bring our black asses back here to Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and do y'all want more children? Yes, I, there was a point in time when I wanted three. I wanted to physically have two, I wanted to adopt one. This one's always wanted two. I think I'm over here where he is. I think I'm over here where he is. Cause you're like, oh, the first child is so nice and then the second one comes. No, this, this first child, y'all love Alexander, but he is a lot. He is his father. He what? is- What? He is Jay. He has ways more energy, way more energy than I have. Okay. He has a lot of energy. You're correct. Yeah. Actually, I think the energy comes from you. <laughs> it has to. He is not calm like me. He can be subdued okay, maybe so. when he chooses to. Uh, the point is, is that, uh, yes, we want kids, but we stopping at two. We stopping at two, and fingers crossed they're not twins, because my mom is a twin. Um, let's see. We did that one. What advice would you give a newlywed couple in their 20s? So we got married in their 20s. I was 25. 26. I don't know. I would say take your time. A lot of people, especially in this day and age where you have everybody's giving advice and master classes and coming up with books and podcasts that tell you what to do it and when to do it and how to do it, you you know your partner better than any one of those other people do. And so take your time. And so if you aren't going into it saying, hey, we should do this, 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 and this, and this, but then you get into it because you started listening to outside sources, don't do that. Um, and we had not really a lot of people, I didn't really have an ideal vision of a married couple growing up. I grew up in a single family home. The marriages around me weren't the marriages that I wanted to replicate. So I went into it just having to figure it out on my own because I didn't have a good blueprint. He grew up in a two parent household, so he had some idea. Like his aunts and uncles, they're married, they seem happy, they seem, it seems, strong um so we grew up from two different things but we went into it was like listen no one knows us no one knows our relationship let's just do what feels comfortable and good to us so that's what i say yeah uh I, i'd probably say something along the same lines just i'd say just go at your own pace uh clearly this is our 10th year being married uh what september mm -hmm. We've been married 10 years and we just had our first kid last year, mm -hmm. a year ago, basically. Uh, so we were together almost, uh, let's be real, seven, eight years before we started trying. Yeah. Uh, and I've had plenty of people, friends, coworkers, and whatnot, you know, since we've been, since I've been married, say, hey, man, when you gonna pop out that baby? When you gonna have some kids? I know your mama probably waiting. I know your parents probably waiting. And those same people. A little time down the road, say, "Oh man, y'all doing it right. Do the travel, get it all out the way. Do it while you can, man. When well, you got these kids, it's gonna be tough. So uh, nothing's perfect. Uh, uh, nothing. There, there, there's no map or book for for any of it. Just go at your own pace. Do what feels right. What are some of your goals as a family in the next two to five years? Where is the <clears throat> next place you would both travel? Let's do the travel one. I want to go to Switzerland. I've been seeing Switzerland." I want to go to Switzerland. I don't know when I want to go because you're supposed to go in the fall, which would be like next August or September. So maybe we'll go for our 11th year anniversary. I don't know where you're. You know where I want to go. I know where you want to go, but I don't want to go. You know where I want to go next. Your friend wants to go to Cuba again. We went in 2019. He wants to go back. It's been four years. It's about to be five years mm -hmm. since we've been. Mm -hmm. No, but really. Um, where are we supposed to go? Why am I drawing blank? Where are we supposed to go for our anniversary this year? Uh, uh, Italy. Uh, Amalfi Coast. Yeah, the Amalfi Coast. 
How much sharing is too much for you guys? How do you balance personal and social media? Thank you for your content, always good. Um, and I think this is one of those where it can get, I think one I would have to say is actually really good that you guys can say, hey, you're sharing a lot on social media. Because as much as I share, there's also a lot that I don't share. Like if you notice whatever I'm saying, me and William are getting ready to have date nights, I don't really share those. If we're getting ready to sit down or have a little meal at home or something like that, I don't really share those. Also, if you notice as far as like our family, I might show clips but I don't really show you. will never really see his mom. You really won't see my family. So there are, as much as we share, there's still so much that I don't share. And I think you just have to look at it. Like we'll do a weekly vlog, but a weekly vlog is one hour, right? So you have 24 hours in a day, times seven days a week, and I convince, condense that down to an hour. So I try to show the important parts. I try to show the parts that are either appealing or interesting or inspiring, but there's still just so much that I just choose not to share. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty much along the same lines for me. Uh, some people might think I or we share quite a bit on our it's, I think it's Instagram or YouTube, uh, but it's really just the stuff we're comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, we share. Yes. There's plenty of stuff like the the irritating stuff we talked about earlier here in the blog that you don't see. Mm -hmm. uh, much more personal stuff, you know, that you don't see. Um, so yeah. What are the common versus differences that you and William have in any aspect of life? Super excited. That's a lot. <laughs> what are the common, some of the things we have in common versus our differences? We'll try to run through this. Where are we at? Oh, uh, we both like to travel. Travel, sports. He's we more both of love heavy food. sports. Food. You know, I, I'm more yes. probably. Um, I'm a wine girl. He's a drinker, but he makes the drinks. Mm -hmm. Um. We both love style. Yes. Style, different types of fashions. You know. So it's really great, especially when we're out like traveling and we're shopping. You know, you always have that guy who's like sitting down because he doesn't want to shop. Not us. I mean, we shop. Like I'll, I'll, we'll go to Zara. We'll kind of like separate and say, go to his section. I'll go to my section. And then after I've picked out my things that I like, I'll go to him and be like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he'll be like, hey, I think you have something similar. Or hey, I think that's not going to look right. Same thing for him. So it's one of those that's been really good. Um, as far as the differences, I like to read books. He likes to read articles. Um, I'm also more of a visual, hands-on person, uh, as opposed to reading, you know, I do love to read, but yes. I just don't read much, yeah. uh, as far as books goes, um, but yeah, like you said, articles. Um, he likes to drive, I like to be driven. <laughs> someone has to keep us safe. Um, what else? There's a lot of differences. He smokes cigars, I smoke hookah. Um, he doesn't work out and hasn't gained a pound. Lies I'm you sorry, tell. the kids sleep. And he is sleeping. But lies you tell. He doesn't work out. My and... frame hasn't changed much. Thank you. I have gained a bunch of weight. Meanwhile, if I sniff a Snickers, it's not really my thing. A, a Butterfinger, two pounds. It's the last day. <sighs> All right, last question for YouTube, and then we're going to get over is what was one of the big, biggest challenges you have to, had to overcome after becoming a parent? Uh, at least at first, for sure, I think timing and scheduling, uh, at least for me, uh, someone who's used to being on the go all the time, traveling, being in front of people, uh, maneuvering that and it kind of became a balancing act, trying to be home more to help her with Alex and uh, other things uh, around the house. Um, you know, not leaving out the night before like I typically did and leaving out early in the morning and coming back the same night instead of spending the night and coming back the next day. Uh, that, that, that took a lot of uh, maneuvering uh, for sure when it first started. Yeah. I would say two things. And I'll say still does. Yeah, yeah. I would say two things for me. One thing is for, is me getting to the realization that we're a team and it's not me 
keeping score. So I would be, be like, I've put him down Monday and Tuesday. He is putting him down Wednesday and Thursday. I don't care what he has planned. And it would be those moments where we would then get into an argument because he might be able to do Wednesday, but then Thursday he's out seeing a client, so he's not back in time. And then I'm mad that he's not back in time because I put him down two days, and then you should put him down two days. So it was, it was getting to the realization that we are not competing, but we are we have to come together as a team and wrangle this child in so that was one thing that i had to overcome and i think the second thing was people's unwanted unneeded advice and it got to a point where it really started to affect me mentally to where i was like is this what postpartum depression looks like only because even before we had alexander we had a lot of people that we considered really close telling us that kid's not going to go on a schedule. You're not going to get that kid to sleep at night. Why are you not option, op, you know, opting to initially start breastfeeding? So we had a lot of people that was giving us advice that we didn't ask for. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it. But they were still giving it to us. And it was very hard for me to allow those people to continue to be around because they're our loved ones. But then they're still giving unwanted and unneeded advice. And... I realized that they were doing it because they were giving me advice based on their situation as a mother. And it came to the point where it's like, you know what? Every piece of advice I don't have to listen to. Because if you listen to their advice, Alexander wouldn't be in daycare and he wouldn't be on the schedule. And so it was one of those where Kiosha kind of gave me some of the best advice that I think I've ever gotten as a mother who was like, just because somebody gives you advice on me, you have to take it. You can sit there and you can listen. And you know, Kiosha, you got to throw in a couple of curse words, but I'm trying not to. She was like, you know, you can sit there, listen to what they have to say. If you want it, you can keep it. If not, you leave it there in a the conversation and then walk away. And that has been the biggest piece of advice for me is like, I get that everybody's trying to give their advice, but we're, this is our child, okay? I don't know if anybody knew, but this, this baby came from my stomach, okay? And from his sperm, okay? So we're the only two people that should have a say so in how he's raised now if we need your advice we'll ask for it but that was that was the biggest one for me and when i when she told me that it kind of like clicked like literally i felt like a light went off like that and it kind of like changed from there so are you having more kids gotcha is will the only child i'll let you answer that that's yours oh that's 35 minutes uh no i am the youngest uh of two so i have an older brother who is uh there's about an eight and a half year difference between us so he is 45 yeah and uh, i'm about to be 37 in february and then he'll turn 46 uh, at some point next year next summer so yeah one of two yeah um which one of you first fell in love with fashion first mm. Mm. i have to say me i would say so i think she kept up with fashion more more or okay. has okay uh than i, I do because I, I don't i don't follow a lot of trends and stuff i'm more of a style person if it fits you go with it if not uh yeah, i'm not building the designer stuff really i'm more of the when it comes to designer i do accessories not more much so clothes and shoes and stuff like that but yeah I, yeah that's okay. what i say um, what do you guys gift each other for holidays and birthdays? We don't, we travel. We've been doing that for quite a couple of years. Um, and it was one of those where it became very hard for us financially to be able to give you a gift and then say, hey, let's do this birthday trip. So we're like, let's just cut the birthday gifts. Let's just, maybe you'll buy me a little dinner or a little, you know, gelato while we're in Italy, but give me a trip. So we, we've cut out doing gifts for each other for quite some time. Now he did give me a 10th anniversary ring. Um, but other than that, we don't we don't do gifts. Next question: Is your lovely husband mixed? Regardless of how light you think I am, and it probably just depends on the lighting, like this bright ass light here. <laughs> uh, I'm tan. Uh, I am not mixed. Both my parents are black. Uh, I've got some light skin in my family, so I'm sure at some point, far down the road. Uh, probably when we first got over to this land, uh, there's some mixture in there somewhere. But uh, as far as I know, from the last couple of generations, few generations, few, few generations, I am 100% black. Yes. 
And I'm not going to get into more detail because, like I said, I don't talk about my size. I was saying you should ask her that question. But uh, Alexander doesn't get his skin color. He gets it some from him, but he doesn't get his skin color or his hair texture Look at that hair. from his dad side of the family. He gets it from me and my dad's side of the family. And I'm not going to go into detail because I don't talk about them, but there's a reason why I'm the only dark skin and my older two sisters are very much light skin. So, moving on. Do you all have curfews? Yes and no. I would say yes and I say 2 o'clock because I feel like that's the time my husband should be home. Now, there have been some moments, especially Until when... Until someone else starts staying out past 2 o'clock. Don't, don't, don't focus on me. Mm -hmm. There have been moments when he's like, like he'll have his friend come into town and he'll let me know ahead of time, like at like 12, hey, I'm probably gonna be out past two o'clock. That's fine. I'm gonna cut the alarm on, make sure to cut it off, yada, yada, yada. And you can't scroll in here at five o'clock in the morning because what are we doing, okay? Mary, you couldn't do that when we were just dating because, <laughs> I mean, married or dating, I got the same standards. Don't roll up in here at five o'clock in the morning. So we do have curfews. Most of the time we've never had to enforce them, but we do have them on here just like, all right, bro, it's one o'clock. What are you doing? And he'll tell me, uh, Alicia, you've been out since four o'clock. What's your girlfriend's? It's 145. We do, but yeah, moving on. How do you ensure you are giving the best of yourselves to one another with your workload? I would, I'm gonna answer this one because my workload is a lot heavier than and what I will say is I don't think if you're going into a marriage expecting it to be 50 50 you're gonna you're gonna lose every single time it's not gonna work out because there's not really often where a marriage where I'm giving 50% and he's giving 50% sometimes I'm only can give 30 and when it's those moments where I'm only giving 30 that without me having to say it he knows he has to give 70 like he has to help me out with my business hey what are you doing hey do we need to shoot hey I'm gonna pick up Alexander hey don't worry about going to the grocery store I'm gonna do groceries he automatically knows that hey I've got a lot going because even though I'm only able to give 30% over here it's because I'm giving 100 in all these other different aspects of my streams of income right or my life whether that be family or whatever so he knows to pick up and do 70 or if he's like I can only give 40 I know that I need to give 60 so it, it it balances out over time but if you're going in saying I'm only giving 50 if I walked in our marriage would be like you know what I'm only giving 50 I expect him to do 50 every single day it's not gonna work out you have to be able to balance the two and I think a lot of times we as individuals going into it saying I'm only gonna do this I'm only gonna do 50% and you wonder why you're having arguments is because you're you're only giving 50 or sometimes you're only you're giving your 50 but he could only maybe do 45 or he could only do 35 at the time and you're mad that no one is there to pick up that 15 because you're dead set at only doing 50. I feel like that's a good analogy. That's very well said. Yeah. Do, do, do. This may be too personal, I expect if you don't, but how do you guys set up your finances? So we keep most things 50-50. We do have joint accounts where we put bills in and we have a joint savings account. I create my budget, I create his budget, where we don't have a lot of um, debt, so we don't keep a lot of debt, and we don't just have like random stuff. And so it's very easy for me to go in at the top of the, at the top of the year, create his budget, and it's not like he has to like stick to it a thousand percent, like he can adjust, do it, or do whatever. But it's because I'm in finance, because I've worked in budgeting, it's easy for me to set up the budgets for both of us. I give him his Excel file and he just, you know, have at it. All right, last question. We have a lot more, but it's time and I got to go. Okay, this is the three Peter. Who picks the vacation locations? Will, what is your favorite cigar? And then Alicia, do you speak other languages? So we'll do the first one. Who picks the vacation locations? I feel like we both do. Yeah. Okay. When it's his birthday, most of the time if it's like a birthday trip, like I know when we went to London, William gave me a list of places he would like to go. Like, hey, I'm thinking I kind of want to go here, kind of want to go here, kind of want to go here. And then I was like, all right, let me put my travel agent hat on. Um, so we kind of pick them, like you pick yours and then we kind of decide on it from there. As mm -hmm. far as our anniversary, I feel like there's there's just there's never been a city that he picked that I I never wanted to go, like I I feel like every city I'm just like oh yeah I'll go there, um and then same thing for me yeah same thing for me there's never been a city where I'm like ooh I want to go the only city where I said I kind of wanted to go he was like yeah that flight's too long was Dubai and I went with Kyoto 
because about it. All right, and then I'm gonna go mine, and then you can go last because you might have a question. Um, Alicia, do you speak other languages? I speak Spanish. I majored in Spanish, so I should be extremely fluent. However, I have not. I literally only use my Spanish three to four times when we travel, so I'm not as fluent as I would like to be. So maybe I'll get up on some Duolingo or some what's the other one? Rosetta Stone to kind of bring me back, but. I used to be very fluent in Spanish, not so much yet. And then what's your favorite cigar? Uh, favorite cigar, if it's not, just in general, if it's not like an everyday thing or a special celebration, my number one cigar is the Oliva, O-L-I-V-A, is the brand Oliva Melania. It was actually voted number one cigar of the year in, I think it's 2014. Mm and has a 96 rating. So, that's my favorite cigar. You can ask any of my buddies that you know uh, enjoy cigars as well, or friends, or just people in general that smoke cigars, they probably know about the Oliva Melania. Is that, e is that easily available? It's at every shop you go to. So ladies, if you are struggling what to get your husband for Christmas, because you don't have that long left, it's coming out. You've got exactly two weeks to Christmas. If I'm a box of those, you'll be happy. Yeah. All right, so we are going to wrap up this q and I did not get to all of the questions, but that just means we have to do this again. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this little face on the screen. It's the longest he's ever been here. Don't expect him around again that long, okay? You're trying to hold that on me, bro. I hope you guys have enjoyed this random video. Please make sure to let me guys know how you like it in the comments. While you're here, I was glad you do it with me, but I'm not. Why are you, I know, because last time you didn't do it right. I didn't do it. What I asked you to close out the vlog. Okay. While you're here, guys, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and do all the things that the other YouTubers tell you to do. And I'm going to catch you guys Thursday. Thursday? Thursday, 7 o'clock. Thursday, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Okay. Later, guys. Now take a word out of Jane Daniels. Who? Jane Daniels. Who the hell is that? Uh, LSU's quarterback Alicia. Uh, LSU? What? The Heisman? We only lost three games. Three games? We only lost one. But she had 50 touchdowns this year. More than Joe Burrow did that year. We only lost one. one. No, you know they won't give it to me. Oh, we should have. You, no, you should have gone, but you know they won't give it to me. That's a bullshit. Do you want to, I wonder if they can hear, just knock him down on like the line, just until we're done, and then we can bring his sound back up. Do I sound nasally? Mm, a little bit, but, but, you Maybe. Didn't, but you didn't talk to him all week, so it ain't going to be like they won't be used to. I haven't been doing a lot of talking on the vlog, well, I haven't been doing the daily vlogs, that's true. Heck, I do too, I sound like a typical, well, just get off or... Whatever you did. I think you <laughs> William. What? Don't say I gave. Okay. Okay. Ready? I have to do the introduction, so don't make me laugh.